Hey, what's up, Rainmakers? This is Steven. I am super excited because today I have Bradley joining us from Helium 10. You see he's rocking the Helium 10 hat. He is an expert at all things Helium 10. And I'm so excited because today, uh, actually just last week, they announced a brand new feature in Helium 10 that I know you guys are going to love. So Bradley uh, generously offered to hop on a call with us, with our community, help walk us through how to use this tool and how you guys can start using it today to start accelerating that product research phase of your business. So Bradley, I'll just let you take it away and then I'll kind of butt in if we have any questions and uh, we'll go from there. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. It's great to uh, meet all you guys. Um, just, you know, real quick, you know, I always talk about this, you know, I don't want it just to be seem like a, a Helium 10 sales call or something, but uh, I, I like to help everybody kind of get in the right mindset uh, whenever we, we go into a certain tool, because regardless of if you use Helium 10 or not, I think it's important that, that you get in the right mindset. And so like we're talking today about product research. And so this is very important that regardless if you use Helium 10 or you, you don't use any tool uh, or use another tool that you have a certain mindset and, and the key of finding products to sell on Amazon. Number one is yes, there is plenty of opportunity out there. It's not completely saturated. Number two is uh, you cannot just uh, choose to sell something that you think maybe you're an expert at, or maybe your company already makes it great. Yeah. If your company already makes it, you're kind of locked in, you know, you just want to expand on Amazon, but you can't expect to, to, to be very successful. You know, the example I always use just because it's right in front of me is, a phone case, right? You know, uh, I could be an expert in phone cases. I could be the the the, the uh, world's um, mo you know, like what's that uh, f funny doctor who goes on kids' TV shows um, and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Ah, uh, I know. What? Who, who watches kids shows? You guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. I can't, I can't even. Uh, Bill, Bill Nye, the science guy. Oh right? yes, of course. Yeah. I, I could be the Bill Nye, uh, Bill Nye, the cell phone case guy, right? Like the. Yeah, yeah the world's foremost expert, right? But that does not mean that I'm going to be successful selling cell phone cases on Amazon. As a matter of fact, I probably won't be because that is so saturated. So the key on Amazon is not trying to sell or find a product that you like or that you're an expert in because that more times than not does not help you. The key to finding product on Amazon to sell is finding the opportunity. So get in the mindset of like, hey, I'm not going to try and uh, find something that I love um, but I'm going to try and find something that there's opportunity on, meaning that there's obvious demand. Uh, number two, the competition for whatever reason is either underperforming or there's not much competition. And that basically is what Helium 10 is helping you do. Now, the traditional way that you could use to search for products is using black box. We're going to use black box, but our new feature, but for those of you who are completely new to Helium 10, I highly suggest using black box and, and there's a learn button on the top and you look at the first couple of videos. Basically, that shows you how to find a product, right? Basically, the original um, function of black box uh, is it searches our database of Amazon products and it's the largest database out of any tool out there. Do, do you know your, yourself, uh, Stephen, how many products uh, Helium 10 has in its database that you can search how many Amazon products we have? Yeah, I don't. I'm sure it's a lot, but how many? 450 million. So if it's not, if it's not in our database, it probably doesn't exist. So yeah. you, you tap into that database and then what you do, uh, let me just show you really quick. I'll, I'll share my screen here. Awesome. Hopefully I don't get blue screen of death like I did a couple seconds ago. You guys can see my screen right now. Yes. Right. Perfect. So if you go here to black box with Helium 10, the, the, the page that lands on first, it allows you to put, uh, it's called products. It allows you to put in a bunch of different filters here to signify to you what might determine as opportunity. Like for example, I could say, Hey, show me something in the baby category. Um, maybe it's making at least $5,000 $5, a month. And the retail price is between like 15 and $25. And then here's where it gets interesting. I can say, Hey, but it only has less than a hundred reviews. All right. So right away, this tells me that, you know, if we have a product uh, or we're in a niche, where everybody on page one has got like thousands of reviews and you're a new product, you get like five or 10 reviews. Nobody's ever going to click on your product because psychologically a buyer is always going to migrate or gravitate towards something that has tons of social proof, right? So the fact that I can find something that has $5,000 a month it's making, 
but less than 100 reviews means that to me, it could indicate one of two things. Number one, well, maybe not everybody has a thousand reviews there. So if I come in with five or 10 reviews, it's not going to look too bad against something with 50 or 60 or 70 reviews as it posts is something that has a thousand reviews. Uh, or number two, uh, maybe I have a function it, or, or this, not me, but this, this product we're finding has a certain function that is so unique that despite um, the lower number of reviews, people are going to click on it because those higher review products just don't meet that function. Okay. And the same thing goes, I can put something here like, Hey, show me something that has less than 3.5 stars. Again, as buyers, me personally, I would never buy something that has three stars. Like just, that's just me. Like mm -hmm. uh, I have to have at least four or five stars. Um, so again, if I can find a product that only has three stars or heaven forbid two, but making $5,000 a month, again, what does that tell you? Well, it tells me that, Hey, there's got to be a reason that it can make that many sales. Number one, maybe all the competition has only two or three stars and people are just picking the lesser of 10 evils, right? Well, then what happens is I come in with a five-star product. Hey, I have an immediate advantage. Or the opposite thing is maybe this product is the only one that fulfills a certain function. So regardless of the bad rating, people have to buy it because there's just nothing out there. But the bottom line is what you normally use black box for is to find a certain product that has different characteristics that might indicate that there is opportunity. So what we did is we kind of flipped the script. So this is still a 1 million percent valid way of searching for opportunity on Amazon. But now we are taking it next level. And this is something that even seven and eight figure sellers I've talked to are just blown away by. Uh, they're like, wow, this is so powerful, right? So now what we're doing is we call it like black box for keywords. What we're doing is instead of finding a product that meets searching characteristics, now we have given the functionality to search for a keyword phrase that has certain characteristics. And I'm going to go ahead and do one right now. I'm going to say, hey, show me Helium 10, a keyword phrase. And, and by the way, we've got millions of keyword phrases in our database, not just products. We've got millions of keywords as well. Uh, that has at least, let's go big. Let's say, hey, this is searched for 25,000 times a month or more. Uh, and then let's go in the, the home and kitchen category. Home and kitchen, maybe kitchen and dining, okay? And then let's say um, amongst the, uh, amongst the uh, top ones on the page for this keyword, on average, they have less than 100 reviews, let's say, okay? And that's all I'm going to do. I, I have tons of different filters I can do here, but this tool is so powerful, literally so powerful. Uh, true story. When I first saw this, I told our CTO, I was like, I don't think we should <laughs> launch this to the, we got to have this to like our very highest tier membership, the one that costs $400 a month, because this is too powerful of a tool. I showed it in a private, um, a private showing to an eight figure seller who helps us out sometimes. And um, he was like, you can, half joking, half serious. He's like, you cannot launch this to the public. He's like, in your little test right there, I just saw three of our products or that we, we either have or that I'm about to do. And you're going to ruin it for us because now everybody's going to have access to these, these ways. You know, it took me forever to find these, but now literally within a minute, I can show you different keywords that, that it might take top sellers hours to find. So this is just a simple one. All I did was say, Hey, show me keywords. that has at least 25,000 search volume that, um, uh, has less than a hundred reviews on average for the top sellers. And is in these two categories and it found uh, 27. Actually, I'm going to go to here to work. I like two word phrases at least. All right. And then if I see here, let me see, where's the one that I keep finding? Uh, where is it? Here it is. Taco holder, right? It's got 30,000 estimated searches per month and only average 66 reviews. So that could indicate that it's a newer niche, right? So if we go and look at this on Amazon, we can like take a look right here, taco holder. All right. Uh, if I run x-ray, x-ray, by the way, guys, is another tool that Helium 10 has. We can see here 30,000 searches. Now, before I show you this, I want to show you guys what we don't want to find. And I'm going to use my famous one of collagen peptides. Okay. This are, these are the indications of a niche that we do not want to get in. And why so? Watch this. I'm going to run x-ray here. 
first of all, we could see that collagen peptides, wow, it's searched for 80,000 times a month, must be great. But look at these sales figures, how much they're doing per month. $2 million, 1 million, 2 million, 400,000, 200,000. I, I mean, like, can you imagine the kind of sales velocity you would have to get right off the bat just to even be able to compete with these guys? It would be near impossible. Let's compare that now to Taco Holder. We've got 40,000, but then look at all these, $7,000 uh, 7, a month, 4,000, 10,000, 6,000. This is doable. You know, These are like 10 units a day, 20 units a day, 30 units a day. It's not too difficult to get to that sales velocity. Again, how many sales velocity does this have? 30,000 units a month. That's 1,000 units a day, 2,000 units a day. I mean, on the low end, we're talking about 100 units a day. It's crazy, all right? What's the next thing that I look for to signify opportunity? I like to see the review count, all right? Look at this, 7,000 reviews, 3,000 reviews, 4,000, 800, 100, uh, 1,400. If, if I'm a brand new product and somehow, even despite all this, I get to the page one and I've got like five or six reviews, you think anybody's gonna click on my listing with five or six reviews next to ones that have 7,000? Probably not. Let's take a look at Taco Holder. Look at this, one guy has, 1,200 reviews, everybody else, look at this, 200, 30, 40, 16, 70, 60, one. Here, this is page one for this 30,000, and there's a guy who's, who's hanging tough with one review, all right? So that just shows you that this, there might be, and I, I'm not telling everybody, hey, go source taco holders. As a matter of fact, don't do it because this is literally the, the thing that I show in all my demos. Yeah. So there's tens of thousands of people who are all watching taco holders, and I hope that nobody is going to go and try and do it because probably by the time they, they source it, it's, it's going to be saturated. And that's why usually I like to pick all kinds of different uh, examples. But for this tool, it's so powerful. I feel I have to always pick the same example because I, I don't want to burn the opportunity for, for everybody else. So I burnt taco holders. So anybody who is planning to do taco holders, I'm sorry, I burn it for you. But this just shows you, I, I found this in 30 seconds to one minute, a, a keyword that signifies that, hey, there is opportunity, there's demand here, there's opportunity because not everybody has tons of reviews, these listings are kind of new. And, and, and then, you know, some people ask, well, well, what's the next step? Well, you could just go, I don't say, don't just go to Alibaba, but what we can do is just to give you an idea of what kind of opportunity there is out there, uh, we're gonna look over at Taco Holder, all right? And let me see if I can find one. I'm gonna look for, this one is Amazon's Choice, all right? They're selling for 22 bucks and it's a set of four. And I can see it's got space for one, two, three tacos. And then there's like this little groove on the outside. So let's see if we can find that. Boom, right there. One, two, three. No, that's four. That's a different one. That's a different one. Nope. Uh, I want to find the almost the exact one. This has no groove. Here we go. One, two, three tacos with the groove. Probably the same one. It's a better picture, right? $1.58. $1.58 times four, you're talking about six, seven bucks, right? And this guy is making a killing at $22. All right, so guys, don't think that you're gonna find a product in one minute, but this just shows you the power of when you use a tool like Helium 10, you can find these opportunities uh, and they're definitely out there. Like I tried to speed through it so that you guys wouldn't see all the other keywords, but on that search I did, there were... 22 other phrases that came up. So somebody who's smart probably is going to pause this replay and, and like look, look at these other keywords. But guys, opportunity is out there. Um, tools like Helium 10 uh, can help you find it because on your own, if you're just blindly searching on Amazon, it's kind of like, what was that movie with, or that Netflix show with Sandra Bullock the, where they're all blindfolded? Uh, black bird box <laughs> bird box yeah so not bird box this is a black box all right yes. if, if you're not using black box it's like bird box because you're, you're just like blindfolded because how yeah. would you find a keyword like this just randomly searching so anyways any questions about that have, have you used that yourself or, or this is new to you as well yeah so i've been playing around with it for the last you know week or so and it's amazing and i i encourage all my you know students people in our community like before we had these like search volume even tools, like keyword tools, it really was kind of blind. Mm -hmm. Like you could look at the reviews, you could kind of guess like, but having the, these tools that really show, wow, this, this is being searched for, 
like it really shows the demand and then also seeing comparing with the other things that you know you've showed like reviews price point all those things it really it may it helps make very calculated risks you know like a business is always a risk but like the more calculated we can be the better and this tool really takes to the next level so super thankful you guys have released this and excited to to help um our students get a hold of it and, and play around with it it's just like I did it for probably like an hour the other night, just playing around with different keywords and even using like, there's a niche that I want to launch a, a brand in and using the tool paired with a keyword that's in that niche um, was really, really helpful. Um, I'll just say it. So what we want to launch some wedding products, you know, um, and my, my students know that we want to launch some products in the wedding niche. So I put in some parameters in there and I put in the keyword wedding and then we saw all these products that I was actually already looking at show up in that tool and be like, oh, wow, this one, that one, that one. And it was just like confirmation of mm -hmm. like uh, those keyword opportunities. Really, really cool stuff. Cool. So, yeah, uh, if anybody uh, has not, uh, what I just showed you, you know, uh, some people know that Helium 10 does have a free, uh, a free um, uh, tool. So... This one is not available in the free tool. So guys, if you're just starting off and you, you just want to try it out, um, do the platinum plan um, because you can try it for 30 days. Even if you, uh, I'm sure Steven has like a 50% off coupon or a 10% off coupon, but regardless of the coupon, even if you pay full price you, using the link, if you're not satisfied with it or you're just like, you know what? Amazon is too crazy. I'm just going to sell on Etsy or eBay or something. We'll give you your full money back. You just have to like, let us know within 30 days and, and, but I really just want every single person to watch this video uh, to, to, to commit to getting that platinum plan at least just for 20 days, 25 days, and really commit to trying it out. Because like Steven said, if you sit there for an hour or two hours, it can be addicting. And I yeah. guarantee uh, if, if you're putting in you know, good, good uh, filters, you are going to find something that could be your next you know, $10,000 product, $100,000 product, $1 million dollar product, who knows? But you're not going to be able to find it if you don't have it. So please, please just, that's why we made that. Um, we made it uh, a money back guarantee. Like if in your first month, you don't want to use it, you can cancel it because we just want to get people to, to try it. And I know that you guys will like it if you do. Yeah, no, that is super cool. And yeah, we have some coupon codes for you guys. If you're watching this video, um, I'll make sure I post those again. So you guys can check that out. And I encourage you get this tool because it almost puts a little bit of pressure on you to do the work too. Cause like that product research phase can feel a little bit like, you know, like Amazon can be a very passive business, but that product research phase is definitely not, you know? Um, so it, it puts that pressure on you to be like, Hey, I got this monthly subscription. I'm going to put in the work. And like I said, even just putting in an hour in, I, I had like three or four product ideas. I was like, I'm going to take these to the next step. And that'll pay for the subscription for the whole year, you know, if I launch one of those products. So super, super awesome tool. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Like, I'm just so thankful for technology and like people like you guys who are just making, like running businesses online easier for people um, and just being resourceful and harnessing these tools. It really, it really takes it to the next level and helps us, uh, helps us accelerate our progress and, and kind of like, save so much time. I mean, even just like using black box in the past, you know, was really awesome, but you would still have to dig through those mm -hmm. results and like, you know, this really saves so much time. So, um, yeah, it's awesome. Do you mind if I ask like one more, I, I post on sure. my, our Facebook, uh, community group, if anyone had any questions for you about sure, here, sure. we had one come up about, um, the, the beta success score. Like the, the five star thing. Cause like usually when we're looking at products, they're usually in like one or two stars. I've never really seen very many yeah. higher than that. Basically um, it's not meant to be good or bad. That's why I tell everybody. And I don't care what tool you use, even helium 10, there, there are plenty of uh, scores that we have like magnet IQ score, you know, comes up in yeah. magnet. Um, nothing is meant to be good or bad. And that's the, one of the biggest mistake that sellers make is, and, and it's not their fault. It's because other tools brainwash people to say, oh yeah, this is this is gonna mean it's a good opportunity or a bad opportunity. Never use Helium 10 tools or anybody's tool as a good, bad metric. Basically, scores are meant to be just uh, comparisons between metrics. For example, you if you guys do a search in Cerebro or Magnet, which is a keyword research tool in Helium 10, it has what's called an IQ score. 
High IQ score doesn't mean good. Low IQ score doesn't mean bad. Basically, if you mouse over it, it tells you that it just gives you the correlation between the number of competing products with the um, search volume, estimated search volume. The higher the number means that there's less uh, competing products compared to higher searches. Doesn't mean good or bad. It just allows you to, in an instant, see that figure. And then without having to calculate you know, those two columns, you kind of have an idea. The same thing on the success score, which is what uh, you're referring to in x-ray. So the top right, it doesn't mean good or bad. If you mouse over it, it tells you exactly what's going into it. It basically says, hey, this is have this score because uh, there's a price variation or because there's this or because there's that. And so again, it's just uh, something that you can look at at a glance so that you don't have to go calculating everything down there if, you, if, if you're a lazy person like myself who, you know, who doesn't want to do that. So uh, guys, don't. There's no such thing as, oh, if it's not a 10 on the success score, it's not an opportunity. Or if it's 75, it's a guaranteed great opportunity. Don't look at it like that. Just look at it for what it is, which is you mouse over it and it tells you exactly what it's calculating just at a glance so that you don't have to go calculating certain things. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah, because I've seen sometimes you're looking through Magnet and you see a crazy high IQ score, but it's because it's like a trademark name or something exactly. that you wouldn't be able to use or things like that. Exactly. So yeah, that's a that's a great tip. Don't see it as good or bad. See it as really just analyzing some of those raw, like a quick yeah. glance, like kind of feeler for that keyword, but definitely do your research, dig in a little bit more. That's awesome. Um, I have one last question. We have one student from Honduras. Nice. Who is, um, she has, she's based, she's from the U.S. originally and wants to sell in the U.S., but she's having a hard time getting Helium 10 to work in Honduras. Have you seen any like workarounds of? No, there, um, there's zero. As long as she has a Chrome, you, you could be in our Antarctica and it works just as the same as anywhere. Okay. So use the only, the only thing is just make sure that on your very few things, like for example, uh, index checker, um, Make sure, and this goes for, again, whatever tool you're using or whenever you're doing your research, uh, if you're in another country, make sure that your Amazon browser, uh, I, mean, I mean, your Amazon account, like if you, let's say you're using Chrome and you're signed in, there's a ship to location. So make sure it's not the country. So just make sure you have a U.S. address right there. Got Otherwise, it. you know, if you, you can search. You, you could be on Amazon.com, but like let's say you are in Bangladesh and Amazon, it's, it's shipped to Bangladesh, you're going to have a completely different set of results Got as opposed it. to if you were searching in the U.S. Like only very few products are even indexed, you know? So make sure that your Amazon.com has a U.S. shipping address. It can be any random shipping address and you should be fine. But as far as functionality outside the country, uh, I would say I mean, we have thousands and thousands of users who yeah. are all over the, the world. So it's okay, not a problem. Cool. Sweet. I'll tell you those tips. That's awesome. Cool. Very cool. Well, I think that's all the questions on my end. Thank you so much for your time and going over this with us. It's super helpful and uh, excited to dive into this tool some more and take people through that process. Sounds good. Very cool. Well, thank you, Bradley. Um, have a good day and we'll talk soon. All right. See you later. Hey, what's up, guys? All right. So I just got off the call with Bradley. Super, super helpful. But I want to walk you guys through the tool myself, too, and show you kind of some insider tips on how I personally would use the tool to scrape through Amazon to make sure I'm looking at the best of the best results, okay? So if you don't have this uh, plan yet on Helium 10, uh, I go. I would definitely go for this Platinum plan because that includes it. It also includes you know those follow-up emails, things like that, that you're gonna definitely want with your Amazon business. And I have a coupon code for that, so make sure you use our coupon codes. Um, they're in the Rainmaker uh, like membership site. They're also on therainmakerchallenge.com slash tools. So if you go here, um, click on uh, this link right here to open up Helium 10, um, and this is like an affiliate link that's associated, and that should allow you to use these codes, okay? So um, this one's the best deal if you're gonna do a little more long-term um, usage of the tool, and this one's the best deal if you're just gonna do a month or two, you know? So um, I personally use this tool every single month, so I just do the long-term, you know, I'm just paying every month for it, but it definitely pays you back because the the time it saves you, uh, the products you can find with this tool, I mean, even just this magnet tool I use all the time. So, um, all right, so let's check this out. So black box, when you log into Helium 10, it's gonna be right up here, click on that, and uh, this takes you to the tool, right? He showed you all this stuff. 
Um, this is the new feature right here is this keywords tool. So go over here. Um, you can use the products tab too, but what I like to do is um, really search for um, those base hit products. Remember, you know, he showed this in the, in the video, like that collagen, peptide collagens. That's a home run product. It's making millions per month. That's not the type of products that we go after because most of us in this group don't have the budget to launch a product like that to be selling 80,000 units you know, per month. That's giving away 1,000 plus per day right? when you do that, thing, that initial giveaway. So most of us aren't in the place to do that. Um, so we go after these base hit products that are you know, going to be making 1,000 to 10,000 a month. Um, and those are amazing passive income opportunities for us and our family. So typically what I like doing here um, is looking at search volumes that are below. I mean, this is totally like I'm going to give you some tips, but totally feel free to break these rules because some of you might want to go for stuff that's a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Right. So I would say um, from what I found in the Rainmaker community, most people are launching products that are kind of between, I would say 1,000, I would say on the high end, 30,000, but most of you guys, I would say are in like the 15,000 search volume or less, maybe even 10,000 or less. And the reason is because when you get in those higher search volumes, they have more eyes on those products, which means they're a little bit more competitive, which means you're gonna have to do a bigger marketing push, you know, giveaways and advertising and things like that when you launch, so it's a little bit less passive. In this 1,000 to like 5,000 range, those products are very passive where you launch them and you kind of you know do the work for that initial launch and then kind of just sit back and you're not really having to worry about competitors as much. But let's do between one and 15 just um, for this search volume. Monthly revenue, um, oops. Monthly revenue really depends. Sometimes I don't fill this out if I'm just doing the search volume. But if I, if, I, if I was gonna be specific on all these things, I would say I would wanna make a minimum of $1,000 on this product per month, and maximum it could go really as high as possible. So, um, but let's see, 15. If I don't put a maximum in here, we, it might just show me products that are really expensive, and like, you know, like, like uh, electric scooter for $1,500, right? And all of us might not have the capital right now to invest in that type of product buy a thousand electric scooters or something like that so maybe let's say the max here let's say 15 again um, 15,000 usually I go 1 to 10 I would say is kind of the range I'm looking for when you get over ten thousand dollars a month those products are definitely gonna be getting a little bit more eyes on them they're gonna be catching a little bit more attention but let's put that one in there um, price point, I like to sell stuff personally that's over $15. I would say minimum $10, okay? Because the Amazon FBA fees are gonna be like, I mean, the smallest a fee gets, like if I'm selling a tiny product like this marker on Amazon, the fee is still gonna be three or $4. Um, so if you're selling something for $10, that profit margin just gets a little bit slimmer. So personally, I like to go 15, um, but for this example, let's just do 10, okay? Um, 10, and then max, um, again, like if you go too high with the price point, your cost per unit, like buying that product from Noviland or Alibaba is just going to be pretty high. So I would say 50, okay? Um, review count, uh, this he showed, basically it takes an average of the reviews on the front page and it's going to show you, hey, on, on average, the, like the review count is 100 or something or less, you know? Um, this one you can play around with. After we search this, if we see no results, definitely play with this because um, actually reviews don't matter as much um, in 2019. Uh, Amazon is giving less, uh, less priority to reviews because they are so easily kind of faked sometimes. Um, so if your product has zero reviews, it definitely affects your listing. But if you have, if you get more than five reviews, like even on your first review, just getting one review increases your conversions, like the amount of people who see your listing and buy it. Um, just having one review does that. If you can have over five reviews, I would say you're good. Um, so I wouldn't worry about the review too much, but you also, again, you don't wanna look at products that have thousands and thousands and thousands of reviews on that front page because again it will be harder for you to stand out from that crowd if everyone else has thousands of reviews so maybe put this number lower you could go 100 
Um, maybe for this example, we will do 100. Um, but if we see no results, then mess around with this number and go higher. You know, 200, 300, 400, 500. Um, I, would, I would probably keep it under 500 um, maximum. Um, okay, cool. Minimum, we can keep that at zero. Review rating, this is like the average reviews on the front page. I'm gonna leave this one off because even if everyone on the front page has five stars, we can still compete with that because I'm sure we can still be creative and, and improve on those products, you know? Look for opportunities on like, oh, is this color missing? Or can I change this one thing about it? Or can I do a different design, you know what I mean? Um, I was looking at, uh, someone was sending me a product recently and it was some sort of like, pouring thing it was like a teapot or something like that and someone made it into like a really cute elephant shape and it totally like made sense as like this little elephant and then it pours out of the trunk of the elephant and it was like just like such a creative and fun design they just took a teapot and they made it into an elephant and it stood out from the crowd but it was super like you know it's just like this niche product that was like, oh, people love this elephant thing. And so taking your ideas to the next level and saying like, okay, everyone else is selling this marker, how can I make this marker better? Can I make it thicker? Can I make it last longer? You know, can I make it a different color? Can I make it glow in the dark or whatever it is, you know? So that's where Rainmakers really shine is using our, you know, this creativity to improve on products and make them better. Um, but if you're really looking for like easy opportunities, you could go for, Hey, I want to say it has lower reviews. He did 3.5. Um, so like if you find a product that has all terrible reviews, it is a lot easier um, to, to just make a five-star product. Just look at all those negative reviews, see what people hate, and then improve those things. Um, that is a really easy way. So why don't we throw 3.5 in here? We'll see. If you dial in this too much, um, you'll search for stuff and nothing will come up. So um, word count, I would say in here he said two um i would leave this one alone because you might have some single word opportunities you might have some two word three word opportunities i mean you probably don't want like super long ones like five or more but it really i mean keywords are keywords you know there's keyword phrases and those can be really beneficial okay now in categories um I would encourage you guys when you're doing this to just choose one and just kind of look at that one category. Or you can, I mean, you can choose a bunch of them, but you might have a lot of results to go through. Um, but definitely avoid like electronics. Like, you know, I've taught you guys all this stuff. Like there's certain ones to avoid. Musical products are typically lower volume. Um, appliances are typically big, so I wouldn't do that one. But I mean, why don't I just do a couple of random ones here. Let's do, um, Let's do these ones. Health and household. I like sports and outdoors. Pet supplies, toys. Let's just do a handful of these here. Kitchen and dining. All right, perfect. Okay, cool. So that's pretty much all I usually do. If you want to, you could also select a shipping size. Um, if you're trying to keep your shipping costs and your FBA fees lower, you're gonna wanna do this small standard size. Um, or maybe these these two here. When you start getting to these bigger ones here, um, this one's small, oversized, sounds small, but it's actually pretty big. It's like a, like a, like this chair I'm sitting on would be a small, oversized product. So I would do one of these two right there, um, just to keep your FBA fees, shipping costs, all that stuff low. And uh, you can really mess with all this stuff here, but let's just search this and see what comes up, okay? Sweet. Okay, so you can see right here, like I am getting a very long keyword here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So why don't I just why don't I just throw in four here as the max? Just to really dial this in. Okay, cool. So check this out, you guys. These are all products that meet these things. They get between a thousand and fifteen thousand searches per month. They make between a thousand and fifteen thousand dollars per month. They are sold for over ten dollars and under fifty dollars. They have an average of a hundred reviews, which is low, you guys and they have slightly bad reviews. Um, so some of these, as you're going through these results, some of these might be trademarked, right? So Smashers, I don't really know what that is. So I'm gonna click on this and it looks like it's in the toys and games, but it could be a brand, right? So Smashers looks like a brand. Smashers, Zuru Smashers. Um, I don't know what these are, but they look very fun. This looks like a toy I would be into when I was a kid. Um, so smashers, cool. This is a thing. Um, it's searched 
5,000 times a month, sold for $24 on average, monthly revenue 1,900, and slightly bad reviews. Um, so could be an opportunity, but again, trademark stuff avoid because you're not going to be able to use really smashers in your name. But maybe there's a related product to this that you could sell. Um, like I did see right here, this is an organizer for smashers. It has terrible reviews, um, but it's on this front page for this keyword. So could that be an opportunity? Maybe. This is literally just like a standard organizer. You know what I mean? Um, here's another one here. Life made better, portable display, protector for smashers, works with zero smashers. Now you gotta be careful doing stuff like this where you're saying like works with, you know, like you can get away with this stuff um, for a bit, but it depends how strict the company is on, like if, if smasher sells their own organizer, they're probably not gonna want you to sell one, um, but yeah. Okay, traceless washable adhesive tape. Look at that, such a specific keyword, but being searched 3,000 times a month, and traceless washable adhesive tape. Wow, look at that. Very cool. So this is where you just start looking into these opportunities and you'd be like, hmm, could I make this product and could I diversify this product and make it better um, than, than the, these other people? The Phoenix Beyblade, Fafnir. I don't know what this is either. <laughs> Oh, it's a Beyblade thing. Okay, cool. We can't sell that. That's a trademark. Outdoor fabric paint. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Cocaine snorter. Wow, you guys, come on. This is really a thing on Amazon? Oh my gosh. Okay, this should not be able to be sold. Don't sell products like that on Amazon. They will not last long. Like, uh, you're going to get banned. Okay, Cupticerie, arts, crafts, and sewing. Ooh, $47, what is this? See, these are things I would never think of, right? Okay, a Cupticerie, Cupticerie. I do not even know what this does. Does it spin a cup so you can paint it? What, I don't know YouTube this. This sounds awesome. How to build a cup turner. Oh my gosh, yeah. Crazy. This is so cool. Okay, I, I'm not like, getting super distracted. Okay, cool, but check this out, you guys. These are such random niches that you can get into, and this tool really helps find those, you know? This Toys and Games ones has a lot of these kind of, um, you're gonna see a lot of trademark ones. Why don't we switch this to word count two, and maybe that'll help us avoid kind of those um, one word trademark stuff. Paintball, 68 caliber, javelin spikes, wow. Oh, wow. See, look at these screw in spikes for your shoes. That's awesome. Okay. So you, I could do this for hours, you guys. You guys see how this works. So really just go have fun with this tool. Um, I'm gonna end this video, otherwise it's gonna go way too long. But play around with this. And like I said, when I was doing this, I you know, was looking at some wedding products. So I put in a keyword here called wedding. So if you're looking into launching stuff in a specific space, you can put in a keyword here and it's gonna narrow your results down a lot. So you might have to increase some of these things, you know, increase, maybe take the review count off or, or this one, take this off. If you don't put anything in here, then it's just going to, you know, show stuff like this. See, if you if you get it too narrow, it's going to say did not match any phrases. Um, so play around with these numbers, you know, because you might find some niches, uh, some products within the niches you're already looking into. Or if you guys already have products, if you're, you know, existing remake or you've already launched products and you want to launch related products, search some of these keywords in here or some of the categories you're already selling in, and uh, you guys might discover some new opportunities that go really well with your business. So, super exciting, you guys. If you have any questions about this tool, you can post them in our Facebook community group, our mastermind group, um, or just comment below this video. I'm gonna stream this live into Facebook. Comment below this video if you have any questions, um, or send me a Voxer if you guys are on a coaching subscription. So, that is all for today. Have fun with this tool. Literally, you can geek out on this tool, but what I would recommend, Geek on tool, write down the, 
you know, write down the opportunities and then dive into them a little bit further. You know, just because something shows up here doesn't mean it's a gold mine. You got to do that product research a little bit further. You know, open up that tab in Amazon, check the x ray numbers on that keyword, check to see, you know, um, is this something that, that I could compete on? Is this something I can diversify, make different, make better? And you guys are going to find a lot of opportunities and uh, using this tool. So go for it. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with and excited to help you out along the way. Bye.